Hello, good morning children. Today we will be starting with another important lesson and this lesson is related to the legend. This is a particular poem. This is a poem number, chapter number is 5.1 and we will be starting the lesson. And this Okay, my dear children, uh, so we are going to start with this uh, particular lesson, lesson number 5.1. The name of the lesson is a legend of the, the Northland. The name of the lesson is legend of the Northland. So, my dear children, <coughs> what do you mean by legend? Have you heard of the, the term legend? So, this uh, term also is related to the human being to too. Say for example, sir, there is a Sajin Tendulkar and he is called the living legend in the field of cricket. There is a, again Amitabh Bachchan, he is also called a living legend in the world of movie or in the, the world of cellulite film. Therefore, legends are the traditional stories that hands down from one generation to the another the authenticity or the, the truthfulness or the veracity of the same may be questioned but there is a great message in it. Therefore, this is a very interesting lesson that we are going to learn. So, from here we will come to understand about a particular region that is the, the polar region. What is the belief system of this uh, people? What is their way of life? and how, how they are affected by the, the region and what is the, their belief system everything will come to know through this story and we will also come to know what is the obvious message what is the, the obvious morality that the poet that the poet wanted to impart to the people so let us uh, see this lesson is written by the famous uh, poet name of the, the poet is Fifkari so first we will learn something about the poet and after learning we will go to the introduction of the, the lesson after a brief introduction we will be directly going to the explanation of the, the poem and after the explanation of the poem we will see in detail what are the poetic devices that are used what are the peculiar theme what, what, what is the central idea and finally, finally we will summarize you, we will summarize the, the lesson, we will make the, the review of the, the lesson and towards the end we will see some question and answer. The question and answer will be of different type. One, there will be extract based question. Number two, there will be traditional type of question and answer. Third, there will be open-ended questions and answer. There will be answers where CCT applies, means your critical faculties are applied. Therefore, let us continue now. So, here it goes. So, the point here is Fibkari. Fibkari was a born in the year 1822. He was a born on 4th September. Name of the place was Mount Healthy. It was in Ohio in the United States of America. He died in the year 1871 in the place of Newport, Rhode Island in the United States of America. His nationality was American. His gender particularly he specialized in the, in the, the prose and his sibling is Alice Curry. Means his a uh, son or daughter that is called the, the sibling so Alice Carey then uh, let us uh, come to the, the introduction to the, the lesson so uh, here we come let us uh, come to the, the introduction of the, the lesson here we go to the introduction of the lesson let us continue this is a simple poem with a moral. 
it teaches us that we should not be greedy. We must help the poor and hungry people. One day, Saint Peter was hungry after the day's fasting. He saw a woman making cake or baking cakes. He asked her for one. That the woman was very greedy. She made a very small and thin cake for Saint Peter, but she did not want to do to be part with even this cake. Saint Peter became angry. He caused the woman to be changed into a bird. She became a woodpecker and flew out of the chimney. She still lives in the wood and keep boring the tree for food. The poem is based on the theme that greed is great sin. Greedy people do not deserve the blessing and the comfort human of human life. Human beings should thus acquire qualities of kindness, fellow feeling, and empathy. The little woman should greed stop her from sharing even her smallest cake with the hungry. Saint Peter thus earning his wrath. Wrath means anger. anger. So, in the modern time, my dear children, so this uh, human value, human value is uh, very much missing. Human values are very much missing. So, what are the way human values? Human values uh, means the the qualities, the emotions, the feelings like the love, sympathy, fellow feeling, pity, these are the human value. And this human value seems to be seems to be destroyed, seems to be spoiled by the advancement of the technology. In this technological age, what is lacking is the human value, and therefore this lesson is quite important for everybody. It actually imparts a lesson. What is the lesson it imparts? It talks about the greed. So what it talks? The proverb related to the greed is that the end of greed is dead. The end of a greed is the end of greed is death. Is death. That means if you are very if you are very greedy, then that, that is a kind of sin, and when you are committing the, the sin, the sin will be causing you causing you the, the death, and therefore we should not be very greedy. And we should be what? On the, the opposite, what would we, we should be? We should be very generous. We should be very generous. Means we should be very benevolent, we should be very large hearted, large hearted. That is the quality that is needed for human being. And when we are having this last hearted quality, when we are not narrow minded, then, then the other person, that is my neighbor, my fellow being, all will be happy and the world will be a peaceful place to live in. So this is the introduction to the, the lesson. So now let us uh, go to the explanation of the, the lesson. So here we go. Let us go to the explanation of the lesson. Now let us uh, see the explanation. Before we start the explanation, what we will do? So it is better to learn, it is better to learn about the Jainer. Have you heard of this word Jainer earlier? Jainer means the kind. Jainer means the kind. Means the type. Means what type of lesson it is? What type of lesson? What type of, what to, what, what category it belongs? Then we are going to talk about the ballot. Okay? This is in the form of the, the ballot. 
So this is a legend. It talks about a traditional story that passed from one generation to another, and this is written in the form of. It is written in the form of ballad. It is in the form of ballad. So now, my dear children, what is a ballad? Ballad is a poem which tells a story, and it is having some rhyme. So now, my dear children, you know what is rhyme? Rhyme means the the similarity of the, the sound of the, the terminal or the last words. If there is a rhyme, if there is a rhyme, if it tells about the, the old story, if it is having some message, if it talks about the, the ancient people, if it talks about some valor, or if it talks about some courageous event, just like the, the events of the, the nights, K N I G H T nights, then Certainly, it is a ballad, and here also we will see that it talks about the ancient time, and it talks about Saint Peter. Therefore, it is a it is a ballad, or it is written in the form of ballad. Is it clear, my dear children? Then let us proceed. Stanza number one. Stanza number one. So here we go. <coughs> So when we explain, uh, we will also see the kind of the, the setting, we will also see the kind of the, the setting. Do you know my dear children what is the setting? S E double T I N G setting. Setting is the particular place, particular place uh, where the, the story occurs then. If we know about uh, this uh, setting of the, the particular story or the poem, then it becomes, it becomes a very clear for our understanding or conception. Therefore, setting also is quite important. So, what will be the setting? That will come to know. First, I will be reading out. Stanza wise, I will be reading out. After that, we will have the explanation. Then, now let us see. We will go to all detail, whatever comes, and you will also tell whatever doubt is there so that we can understand 100% and we can enjoy the, the poem. We can enjoy it like anything. Here you go. Let's cross it. Away, away in the, the Northland, where the hours of the, the day are few and the nights are so long in winter that they cannot sleep them through. Here let us see. So we are talking about what? We are talking about the Northland. Means how many poles are there? In the, the globe, how many poles are there? There is the North Pole. There is the, the North Pole and there is the, the South Pole. There is the, the South Pole. Now, we are talking about this North Pole. In the, the North Pole, many countries are there like Canada, Greenland, Netherlands and other countries are there. And we are talking about uh, this particular area. So, what is the speciality of this is a polar region. We are talking about the polar region. We are talking about the polar region. We are not talking about the northeast region of India. We are talking about the polar region. What is the speciality of polar region? The speciality of the, the polar region is that it is a very, it is very cold. It is very cool. Therefore, the people there, what do the people uh, do? The people wear the Wear the, the sweater, wear the, the warm clothes, which are very furry. F U R R Y. Furry means it is a full of furs. It is a, the it may be the furs of the, the sheep or other animals, and therefore they look like what they look like the, the calf of the, the bears. The calves of the bears. Therefore, now we are transported. Uh, we are transported uh, to where? So the setting of this particular poem is the Northland. It may be Netherland. It may be Canada. It may be any other land like which actually belongs to the, the polar region. That therefore the setting of the, the poem is is the Northland. And this is a far away, away, away. When this uh, what is repeated? This repetition is 
having a purpose the purpose is to give the stress s t r e s stress means it is a used in order to give the emphasize it it wants to give the emphasize emphasize means it wants to give it wants to give the reinforcement reinforcement enforcement this was so during the, the time of the, the flood when i'm talking about water 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 rabbi we not a drop to drink i mean to, to tell that i mean to, to tell that water is separate that means everywhere is water everywhere is water in the, the similar manner away away is repeated the telling that it is a far far away so now we are transported into the wings of imagination to to where to the northland hum log abhi northland mein ja rahe hain जहा जहा केवल क्या है बर्फ है ओके वेर दिकुलरिटी ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर लैंड इज दैट द नाइट्स आर वेरी नाइट्स आर वेरी नाइट्स आर वेरी लॉन्ग एंड डेस आर वेरी शॉर्ट इट इज सो लॉन्ग डेट दैट यू विल बी स्लीपिंग एंड स्लीपिंग एंड यू कैनॉट फिनिश और यू कैनॉट एग्जस्ट द नाइट द नाइट विल बी लॉन्गर देर फॉर यू कैनॉट यू कैनॉट कंप्लीट you cannot uh, cannot uh, sleep throughout the whole night then let us come to the next stanza stanza number 2 stanza number 2 here you go and i shall have uh, some peace here for peace Uh, let us uh, see this uh, stanza. Now, this stanza is they tell them a curious uh, story. I do not uh, believe it's true, and yet you may you may learn a lesson if I tell the tale to you, my dear children. So here we see the the particular story. So now we are going to the Northland. We have already reached the Northland. and now we are becoming we are becoming familiar with the people and from their from their mouth we can we can listen to the, the legend that is very much prevalent or that actually is a very much very much known to all the, the people there in north what is that so we want to learn about the legend okay legend means this is a very interesting traditional story and interesting and interesting interesting traditional story interesting traditional traditional story traditional story that we are going to going to learn so now this story is particularly related to whom related to peter john peter is related to the john peter so they they tell a very curious story curious means what very much very much interesting i n t e r e s t a n g very interesting story they tell curious means one is very much curious to know okay curious to know what is the opinion of the, the poet the poet is telling that i do not uh, think that the story is uh, is correct the story is truth there is a truthfulness in the, the story i do not sincerely believe in it and yet you will learn a lesson i tell the, the tell to you tell means the story so the poet is of the, the opinion that he is not very much sure as to the truthfulness of the, the story but there is one benefit one benefit out of it what is the benefit those traditional stories pertaining to the religious tales or the religious uh, religious uh, books 
they are they are particularly for giving some giving some message or moral to the people when you are listening to, to the, the legend or the, the stories pertaining to the, the past time you begin to be afraid of and in this uh, way in this uh, way you begin to believe that also and in that uh, way you can take a very uh, rightful path in this world am i correct my dear children okay then let us continue so i suppose you understood uh, this lesson this uh, part of the lesson this stanza now let us uh, go to the next stanza so here we move let's go next stanza once when the good, good saint peter lived in the world below and walked about to eat preaching just as he did you know so this story is related to saint peter so do you know why is uh, with saint peter saint peter saint peter is an apostle and a p o s t l e apostle means the p r e a c h e r preacher means was teacher religious teacher religious teacher this is a story pertaining to the, the old testament the old testament have a heard of old testament old testament testament the original form of the bible okay the original form of the bible that the old testament in the, the old testament there is a story pertaining to or related to saint peter who was an apostle of teacher of jesus christ and he was a sent to the, the world in order to give the, the message of god message of god and he was a uh, living in the, the world and on that particular day he was fasting my dear children do you know what is the fasting fasting means means that you are controlling your greed you are controlling your emotion you are becoming a very good person that's by fasting and you are making your body also better because when you are continuously eating and eating then your body may not work effectively and therefore sometime rest is needed and this rest is in the form of the fasting and <clears throat> our saint peter was also, also fasting and towards the end of the, the day what what happens the person who who fast he become he become very much weak or very much feeble f double e b l e he becomes very much so feeble so he was uh, in search of food so he was uh, walking all about and then he saw a woman he saw saint peter was a very powerful person he had a lot of power but the, the women did not know anything about it the women thought that he is a simple beggar asking for alms a l m s alms therefore the women become very greedy and she did not uh, like to do pass with the the pick or the bread so sorry is it the quality of human being if a person is in danger if a person is uh, hungry if a person is uh, thirsty is it uh, not my duty to help him out therefore this is the kind of the, the kind of the lesson the poet actually wants to convey to our reader then let us see stanza next next stanza here we go stanza number 5 stanza number 5 he came to the, the door of a cottage in traveling round the, the round the earth where a little woman was uh, making cakes and baking them on the hearth baking them on the hearth hearth means what hearth means the fireplace fireplace you know notebook so what you need to do you need to write all the, the word meaning which are unfamiliar unknown to you because of vocabulary matters 
when you are learning the, the word you can actively use it when it becomes your own that means your power also increased your wisdom also increased because word is equal to wisdom word is wisdom what is wisdom therefore what to be mastered okay different application of the, the what to be mastered here you, let us uh, see <clears throat> he came to the, the door of a cottage now there is a small house or a hut and in the, the hut in the, the small house there was a small woman what was the, the woman doing in the, the evening time she was uh, baking cakes she was uh, baking cakes and at that time our apostle john peter was making the round on the the of the of the world and when he was walking at that time he saw the the women backing and naturally naturally what he did he went there he approached for a piece of bread a piece of bread or cakes then let us see what follows Very good. Next angel. And being faint with the fasting, for the, the day was almost done, he asked her from her store of cakes to give him a single one. So he is a teacher, he is a religious teacher. Who is a religious teacher? Saint Peter. and he was a very righteous person means he was leading a very rightful life he was fasting according to the suggestion or the dictate of the religious book so he was fasting and he also knew that fasting has a lot of benefit to the body also therefore he was fasting and the day was almost done means the day is coming to an end it is the evening time and it is the time for breaking the fast the time for the breaking the fast but as he was a preacher he did not have any money to buy his food therefore he approached the approached the women who was making the warm cake who was making the warm cake he wanted to have one and he gave to the proposal to the women then what happened let us see let's continue she made a very little cake but as it baking lay she looked at it and thought it seemed too large to give away it seemed too large to give away so what is the kind of the feeling the kind of the feeling is the women is a miser the women is very greedy the greedy greedy people they do not like to part with their own property even though it is a very insignificant or unimportant too they do not have the habit of helping other people and that is what happened to this lady also the lady this women the small woman was very very greedy so she was baking a cake and when the baking was done when the baking was done she looked at the piece of the cake and she felt that it is a too large to be parted with means it is so large that one cannot be parted with it means she was unwilling to give it to the preacher therefore therefore what the lady did the women women started to meet a very thin thin bed once again therefore let us go here we proceed therefore he needed another and still a smaller one but it looked a once he turned it to over as large as the first i had done oh my goodness how my god this people can be therefore we have seen in the first instance that she could not be part of the first uh, first piece of the bread or the cake 
therefore she begin to she begin to back another one she need it okay suppose this is the bucket and here you are putting putting what you are putting to the floor and or you are you are putting any any kind of uh, any kind of uh, things uh, like the rice also you can uh, put here the powdered rice you can uh, put here okay <clears throat> so now when you are making when you are making making when you are okay k and e a d kneading kneading means uh, so you are your powder is uh, there either it is at the floor or it is the powder of the, the rice then you are putting water and then you are making the, the kneading okay uh, so after processing you are making small small speech there is meaning so another one was the kneaded and it was a smaller one but when she looked at it she felt that it is as large as the first one then she took a tiny scrap of dough tiny scrap these are, these are the dough okay these are the dough and a very tiny one very tiny one was taken very 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 small one very very small bindu point scrap scrap means piece p i e c s or the dub dub was taken these are the dub so this may be in this form also this may be in the form this form separate separate dub and uh, rolled and rolled it uh, flat and then uh, then what she did uh, this uh, dub was rolled and rolled and then then what uh, happened it uh, become larger in size it was uh, it was uh, just like a thin plate thin plate and backed it as a wafer but uh, she could not uh, part with that so after seeing at uh, this also in this third instance also that the women could not uh, part herself with uh, this uh, thinner piece of bread or cake also then what will happen to the person who is uh, standing there just waiting for the piece of the bread naturally the man will be angry and the saint also is a human being human being even though a very noble human being yet he is a human being and therefore naturally what will happen he will be angry he will be angry and that is what happened let us see what happened later on so the action will follow the reaction now this is the time of the reaction this is the time of the reaction okay this is the time for the reaction what is the reaction so the action was the greedy action who actually had the greedy action the woman the reaction will be reaction is in the form of the anger so anger by the apostle the priest okay that is the saint peter that is saint peter for she said my cakes that seem too small when i eat of them myself are yet too large to give away so she put them on the shelf okay this is the shelf and in this shelf so she was storing storing the bread and now she was telling when i am taking the, the taking the, the piece of the, the bread or the, the cake it seems to be so small but when i am going to give it it, it becomes a, so huge that actually is the question of question of the outlook question of the, the outlook question of the attitude question of the, the attitude because of this attitude what exactly happened because of this greedy attitude she felt that the small thing the small gift she cannot apart with appear to be so huge or so gigantic in form therefore let us continue here we go the good saint peter grew angry for he was hungry and faint and surely such a woman was enough to, to provoke a 
faint. So, my dear children, let us continue and see here. So, first we will be talking about the rhyme here. Okay? Let us talk about the rhyme here. So, how this rhyme and rhyme scheme, rhyme scheme is found out, I will be talking about. Say, for example, that the good, good Saint Peter give angry. Suppose that this is A. This is the last sound, angry. For that, we are making a sound, okay, symbol sound, that is A. Faint and angry is a different, therefore, I am putting B here. Now, women and angry, this is a C here. Provoke a saint, saint you see, this is related to, related to B, faint and saint is the same. Therefore, rhyme scheme here will be A, B, C, B. Understood? So, in the, the similar manner, we will be trying to find out the rhyme scheme throughout the lesson. So, now this is a part of the, the reaction. This is a part of the reaction and in this reaction part, we notice uh, that Saint Peter give very angry at the action of the, the women, the greedy women. Therefore, what uh, she, what uh, he did, as he was a very hungry and because of this hunger, he was having the fainting emotion. What he did, he become, he become very angry and he give a curse. Okay? He gave a curse. Curse to the women. What is the curse? The curse of the, the curse of the, the particularly the, the teacher, religious teacher will come true as it is a belief, as it is a belief, he is a man with a lot of power, lot of super power or lot of, lot of uh, unnatural power and because of that he can, he can cause miracle too. Therefore, what is the kind of the cards that is given, let us see in the stanza, stanza number 12. So, let us go, let us continue. And he said, you are far too selfish to dwell in a human form, to have both the food and shelter and fire to keep warm. Now, as the apostle, as the priest, John Peter, grew very angry, therefore, he felt that you are not fit or worthy to live as a human form. I curse you. I curse you that from today onwards, Today onwards, you will be transforming. You will be transforming into a bird, and then you will be searching for the food whole throughout the day just by pecking and pecking onto the food. That was the curse. So horrible, so fearful. Curse was given by and uttered by uttered by the priest, and he said, "You are too selfish." To dwell in a human form means you are so selfish that you are unfit to live in the form of the human being. Therefore, from human, now you will be transformed into bird. Okay? You will be transforming into bird. Metamorphosis. Therefore, let us continue what follows. Now we shall... You shall build as the barter do and shall get your scanty food by boring and boring and boring and all day in the hard dry wood. So this is the kind of the curse that was uttered by the, the religious person, the, the priest or the, the preacher. Preacher, he said that now it will be transferred to God. And as the barter do, this bird is the wood faker. You have passing to the wood faker. Okay, P E C K E R woodpecker. Okay, so woodpecker is having the sharp beak, and because of the sharp beak, it can bite or bore bore on the bore on the on the body of the tree for the food. 
and will be boring and boring and boring boring our all the day for the scanty food for the scanty food means you will be getting very small amount of food and your labor will be more compared to the labor you are earning will be very less then let us continue here we go then afshi afshi went through the chimney never speaking a word and out of the top flew a wood pecker she was changed to a bird my dear children miracle happens so there are the women and now that the women is changed to changed to a bird and through the chimney so through the chimney or what she did she went out went out to the to the, the tree in order to in order to board the, the tree board the tree and search for the food so this is in brief the story last part she had a scarlet cap on her head and that was the left the same but all the the rest of her clothes were very burned black as coal in the flame now my dear children so funny and interesting she had a scarlet cap there is a red color there is a red color cap on the head would be carry will see there is red color cap on the head of the woodpecker and the body part the rest of the part will be black because the cloth the rest of the cloth of the women was burnt into ashes and therefore it grew as black as a coal as black as the coal therefore we can see in the tree the woodpecker this this too picking the wood or boring the wood for the food continuously because it is a believed that it is the impact or the result of the curse that is uttered by john peter because of his anger on a woman who was so greedy or too greedy to part with a scanty or small amount of food then let's continue and every every country school boy has seen her in the, the wood where she lives in the, the in the tree still this uh, very day boring and boring for food in the villages where there are forests and the, the trees where the country children when they, they come from the, the school when they, they go to the, the school then they can see by the, the side of the, the road or in the, the forest the woodpecker boring and boring in the in the tree for the for the purpose of getting the food so this is in brief the, the story very engrossing e n g r o s s i n g engrossing or very interesting or very enticing e n t i c i n g enticing means very alluring means very tempting means a very impressive story and our mind to become very much happy because we get a moral lesson so the lesson is that one should not be greedy because at the end of a greed is death one should have the human qualities like the feeling sympathy emotion pity for the fellow fellow beings or the fellow human beings then our earth also will be a peaceful place to live in so this is the part of the story part of the, the story that the poet wanted to give through this poem the legend of the northland my dear children i suppose you understood everything so now we will be going to going to some of the part of the, the story some of the part of the, the story particularly we will be talking about the poetic devices some of the poetic devices so that are used in the poem already we have discussed some and some other like the enjambman personification and other poetic devices that frequently asked in the exam and that adds to the beauty of the, the poem will be discussed now therefore let us 
go back and see the same. So here you go for the poetic devices used in the lesson. The poetic devices. The liver, literary devices or the poetic devices used in the lesson. The first one is enjambment. My dear children, you will remember, you will be noted down and in your notebook also you will be entering the, the same. So the term is called enjambment. And you will try to make the application also of the, the same in your own sentences too. How the enjambment define and how you make the, the application of the, the same enjambment. So it is a poetic device or the literary device or it is also called figure of speech. What is it called? Figure of speech. What is the another term for it? Poetic device. Okay. This uh, what is the what is the purpose of using this uh, device? The purpose of using this device is uh, to enhance the beauty of the poem. Means uh, some additional information in the, the beauteous form can be given. Therefore, this literary device or the poetic devices are used. One is enjambment. Enjambment is uh, when a sentence, phrase, or thought does not end with the line. Okay and run to the next line is called enjambment. Another name for this one my dear children is called run on line. Have you got it? Run on line. So when you are asked to do, give the definition of what is enjambment, you are asked the question, maybe it is the oral question not the question that is asked in the examination, then you can tell enjambment is a poetic device or enjambment is a literary device or a figure of speech which is similar to or akin to run online means where when you are talking about a particular poem when the sense or the meaning runs from one line to another when the, the sense does not complete in a particular line then we used to call it that there is use of Enjambment or run on line. Is it clear, my dear children? So, as you have seen in the poem, we are going to going to the story. So, in the first stanza itself. So, let us see the first stanza of the of the poem. We can we can notice we can notice the, the same. Here you see, away away into the Northland. Where the hours of the day are few and the nights are so long in the winter they, that they cannot see them through. Here you see, the sense is not complete in a line. Therefore, in order to complete the same, the line is running to another one, another line. The line is running to another line. Therefore, it is called run on line or it is called enjambment. Therefore, with the help of 1 plus 2 plus 3 plus 4, you can make the sense that when you go to the Northland, which is a far, far away, where the, the days are very shorter, where the nights are very, very longer, where the people cannot complete, complete the night by sleeping. So, we are going to that particular place in the Northland, in the polar region. That means this is the use of the run on line or the enjambment. Have you understood my dear children? Let us uh, continue now. Some other devices that we see. Another one is uh, the imagery. Imagery is uh, the word, imagery is uh, coming from the word image. Okay, image. What is the meaning of image? Image is the shadow. You know? Image is another simple meaning is shadow. There may be the virtual image, there may be the re real image. One is real image, another one is virtual image. Now, when the word, when the word are portraying or depicting a particular image or picture, then we used to call that a image. Or Together, together we can call them as imagery. Many images together are, many images together is 
imagery and the imagery that is used here will be not the real imagery but the virtual imagery because because it is the it is in the mind that a picture of the, the north land or the polar region is painted in our mind when you go through the first stage of the poem therefore this is called the the imagery so in the, the similar manner my dear children there are many other poetic devices say for example the the, the personification where the attributes of the human being is given to the, the non non living things then there is again the use of the reiteration there is the use of the reiteration 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 means repetition of the, the word repetition of the, the word is used for the purpose of putting the stress putting the stress or emphasis reiteration again uh, there is the use of the consonants consonants my dear children this uh, consonants is the alliteration have a heard of alliteration alliteration is the similarity of the, the sound okay in the, the poem when you go to the, the line of the, the poem okay then when there is a similarity of the, the sound say for example blow blow west wind b sound is repeated west w sound is repeated in this uh, manner when when there is the repetition of the, the sound that is generally it is uh, called the, the alliteration when there is a repetition of the, the vowel sound it is called the assonance 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 when there is the repetition of the, the consonant sound it is called consonance c o n consonance n n c consonance so in this uh, way you will have to write the definition of alliteration the part of this alliteration assonance and consonance you will also write the application of the same in the in the notebook and then you will be very expert and in the years to come in the future so you will be using this uh, application you will be you will be using these devices in your write up then it will be quite interesting and when you are talking in your talking also if you can use uh, these uh, poetic devices then your speech will be really really marvelous all right so we have already discussed about the, the rhyme scheme we have uh, talked about the, the poem we have uh, talked about the poetic devices we have uh, talked about the significance of the, the title introduction to the, the lesson message of the, the lesson and also we have talked about the legend we have talked about the form of the, the poem that is the genre and i suppose that after this discussion of this poem nothing is left ununderstood nothing is hazy or foggy i suppose everything is very crystal clear to you am i correct my dear children so with this hope let me conclude thanks to all See you in the next video. Till then, bye bye. Have a very very good day.